So in the United States, you would never see an avocado that looks like that. But in Brazil, this is what avocados look like. Here in the Brazilian supermarket, you will find things that you won't find in any other supermarket. Today, I'm going to go on a tour of a Brazilian supermarket, show you things that you can only find in a Brazilian supermarket, and also show you kind of the style and layout and different products you could find. Right now, I'm in a park called uh, Agua Branca which translates to Whitewater Park. It's a park in the middle of the city of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is a very urban city. It's definitely a concrete jungle, but here they have a little horse track. You can see a horse behind me. This is where the police train their horses. And there are many free ranging animals. We have a chicken, we have a duck or a goose. I'm not really sure which one that is. I, need to go back to uh, biology class I guess but anyway I'm going to the supermarket across the street it's a big supermarket let's see what we can find there say hello to the horse 1994 I think that was the year he was born how old uh, do horses get like how, how long do they live I don't know that's another question but the point is let's go to the supermarket hey rooster but before we go to the supermarket I just wanted to show you this peacock Portuguese, they call this a pavão. I think it's one of the most beautiful animals in the world. I just want to see if it's going to open up its tail and show us its true colors. Look at that color. It's just a beautiful, beautiful animal. Oh, this rooster's trying to fly. You know what's crazy? I guess I grew up in a city, so I'm not used to seeing all these animals, but like the roosters, they hang out in the trees and they like take naps in the trees. Maybe I'm just showing my ignorance as a city boy but that's uh, pretty cool now this is an animal we have in New York City pigeons oh I love the way they sleep and just rest look you can even find the chickens and roosters outside of the park I guess they really have free reign look that rooster over there pretty crazy so we're gonna check out this supermarket. It's kind of an upscale supermarket. I guess upper middle class maybe. Across the street you can see OXO. If you've ever been to Mexico, you know those are everywhere in Mexico. People use those for giving directions. Oh, you get to the OXO and you make a right and make a left. But uh, they arrived in Brazil about six months ago. And now they're everywhere. I guess they're like little 7-Elevens. But we're gonna check out a, a proper supermarket over here. One thing that you will find out often in Brazilian supermarkets are different type of establishments. The entrance, this is a like a, a hair salon. So you can get your manicure, pedicure, um, depilation is like uh, getting your hair removed. All at the same place where you go to the supermarket. They have a bunch of stuff for kids too, that little game I remember from Toy Story. And of course they have super, um, supermarkets, pharmacies everywhere. Brazilians go to the pharmacy all the time. You have a little iPhone place or cell phone place. And what else do we have here? Oh, we have a little ice cream shop. Also, you can find acai everywhere here. And then a little bakery, they call these salgados, salgado shop. They're a little like um, kind of pastries usually with meat. The most famous one being the coxinha, which is a kind of a fried chicken ball. One thing that's unique here is they have places to buy lottery tickets, specific places. So it's not like inside uh, the corner deli, but you can buy a lottery ticket right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the supermarket a little bit later. They didn't want me filming in there. They wanted me to ask permission. I don't like to ask permission. I prefer, what's that phrase? It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So I'm gonna go back later and film, <laughs> but I already uh, bought a few things, you know? They thought I was like a competitor spying on them. I'm like, that's, that's crazy. But I've been kicked out of supermarkets in many different countries, so. I didn't get kicked out. I didn't get kicked out. I was told not to film. It's different. Okay, so I got, uh, one thing that's confusing for me is the, everything here is grams, like 500 grams. I thought it was going to be huge, but uh, 500 grams of rigatoni, pasta canning rigatoni. Um, I got some broccoli. They call this Japanese broccoli. I didn't know if I got it right, but it's called ninja. So I guess, I mean, I guess that's, that's Japanese, right? Okay, phone just died, so I wonder what happened there. But uh, now I got manjericão in a little packet. Manjericão would be a basil. So 
we call it basil. This is dried basil. I got some oregano. I was supposed to get something else, but uh, oregano is what I got. Then I got a couple types of paprika. So I got spicy paprika, just like in Spanish, picante, picanche in Portuguese. Uh, and I got sweet paprika, which is paprika dulce. So I don't know which one we're gonna use. We got our chicken, um, you know, cut up a little little garlic. And uh, I don't know if you use the godfather technique with the little razor, but I guess not. But that's it. So we're gonna cook right now, but I'll take you back. I'll sneak back into the supermarket later and film some more stuff. So hang tight. Okay, day two, I'm back in the supermarket. Uh, let's see if I can record here without uh, getting in any trouble. Except they got some milk. I guess this milk does not need to be refrigerated, which is a little different. Um, so for you, maybe it seems like 30 seconds, but it's been 24 hours. And now I'm back. This is one of their favorite drinks here. It's called Faji. Uh, it's like uh, Nesquik. Another thing that's very common in Brazil is um, condensed milk. They use it in a lot of different things and they use it to make one of their most famous desserts which is called a brigadeiro. It's kind of a Brazilian brownie but it's not really a brownie. It's kind of hard to describe. So this supermarket is huge as you can see. Let me show you around. Oh, Starbucks. It's really huge. They have tons of aisles. They have uh, like a little coffee shop, butcher. There's 42 different, you know, um, aisles to pay. I forget what they're called. My English is rusty. <laughs> Cashiers. Oh, that's the word. Yeah. In Portuguese, it's called caixa. So you can see there's the butcher, cold cuts, roasted chicken, sweets, coffee shop, bakery. So just tons of stuff. Cheeses. Looks pretty good. This is definitely an upscale supermarket. A little cafeteria. You can actually sit, have a coffee, talk to your friends. Brazilians love cakes, especially these kind of, uh, I guess that's a, I don't know what kind of cake it is. Chocolate cake, a lot of corn cakes. This is a very famous Brazilian snack called uh, suspiro. Kind of, kind of tastes like a marshmallow. It's kind of hard to describe. Some Brazilian junk food. We call it junk food in the United States. That looks like a Twinkie. Brazilian Twinkie, different flavors, vanilla, chocolate, chocolate with vanilla, brigadeiro, like I said before, dolce de leche, which is kind of like a caramel. There you can see 42 different aisles to play, cashiers. One thing that's very common in Brazil are these snacks. They're made from pulvilio. I don't even know how to describe that in English. It's kind of like Similar to what a cheese doodle is made out of, but less cheddar cheese. They're very common on the beach. Okay, polvillo is cassava cornstarch, or starch from cassava, cassava, so definitely not something that's that common in the United States. Like I said, they have so much of this kind of powdered and condensed milk. It's very common here for a lot of different recipes. This is a special drink. Well, it's a container for a drink that they make in the south of Brazil. It's called uh, Chimajon. It's the name of the drink. It's kind of like a tea, kind of like a similar kind of to the Argentinian mate. Also, you can have it cold, which is called terere. So you put it in this thing, which is called a bomba, and you stir it up. There's a lot of different rules, which I don't know, because I don't really drink it that, that much. And people in Sao Paulo, where I am right now, they also don't drink it too often, but it's very common in the south. Um, eggs, of course, the sandwich eggs cost 13 reais, so that would be like $2 for 20 eggs. Not bad. They also have different styles of eggs. They have country style eggs, which they call ovos caipira, which are probably a little more. Yeah, they're probably like three times as much. And there's a lot of different fruits in Brazil you can only find in Brazil. Let me show you a few. They have a lot of different types of banana. This is called the uh, banana prata or silver banana. They're much smaller, but you can find many different types. Like, that's called banana narica. It's a completely different style of banana. And this is a, an orange, right? It looks like a lemon, but it's an orange. A lot of different colors you can find here. And uh, fruit is generally cheap in Brazil compared to the United States, and much more fresh. This is passion fruit, maracujá, very common. This is an avocado, right? You would never think an avocado would look like this. Let me take a picture of that. 
So in the United States, you would never see an avocado that looks like that. But in Brazil, this is what avocados look like. Here in the Brazilian supermarket, you will find things that you won't find in any other supermarket. This is another fruit you're never gonna find in the United States called pataya. And I think these are, are lemons, because they look like lemons, but sometimes it'll look like something you see in the United States, but it'll be completely different. Like, I don't even know what these names mean. I've never seen this. This is like a miniature mango, and those are regular sized mangoes. Of course, the most famous cut of beef in Brazil is called picanha. And it's kind of hard to find in the United States, that exact cut. Fraldo would be like skirt steak, concha filet. I don't know what the exact translation for that would be. I'm not exactly the best on the grill. Another common thing for Brazilian barbecues is this. It's called queijo coalho. It's like a cheese stick, kind of a cheese shish kebab. Very tasty. Great with a little bit of beer on a nice charcoal fire. Let's see what else we got here. Coffee, of course, is huge. This city, Tres Corações, it means three hearts. It's the city where Pele was born. So very famous from the state of Minas Gerais, famous for their coffee production. Maybe the world's biggest coffee producing state. This is what I was talking about, about uh, Erva Mate, which is uh, what they used to make Shimahom. I'm thinking about getting into Shimahom. I'm not sure if I will. You know, maybe drink some Shimahom instead of drinking beer sometimes. It might be better for my health. I'm not sure. Of course, in a Brazilian supermarket, rice, which is a host, and beans. This whole section is just rice and beans and farinha, which is um, flour. So I'm gonna buy some chickpeas. I wanna make some hummus. My friend uh, from Syria just gave me a recipe and I'm gonna see if I can make some hummus. So that's my next challenge. Let's see if it works out. This is the big popcorn company, Japanese company. A lot of Japanese descendants have food and um, you know agricultural companies in Brazil, especially in the area of Sao Paulo. This is one of the biggest for popcorn. These are pretty popular here. They're little like, uh, kind of like peanut things. I don't really know how to describe them. But uh, yeah, see, another uh, Japanese brand, Kitano, Yoki. Can't forget about our pets. There are a lot of pet stores in Brazil and a lot of pet products. Brazilians love their pets. Of course, you have your religious candle section. In uh, in US, we call this like the the foreign section when they have the religious candles. I forget what it's called, like uh, foreign foods or something like that. In case you want to buy a toilet seat, you know, you never know when you need a toilet seat. I, I need tahini, which is a, kind of a seasoning for the hummus. Oh, this is really common in Brazil. It's called uh, palmito. It's kind of like pickled palm hearts. It's a uh, part of the palm tree. People love to eat it. They have all different styles. They have spaghetti style. It's not spaghetti, but it's in the shape of spaghetti. People eat it all the time. Very, um, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Okay, I'm back from the supermarket. Let me show you what I bought. So first of all, I got some table wine. This is a Brazilian wine from Sao Paulo. Most of the wine that is made in Brazil is actually made in the South, but this is a wine from the state where I'm currently located, Sao Paulo. Um, a lot of wine actually is imported. Most of the wine you find at the stores from Chile or Argentina, but Brazil does make some good wines. This is a table wine. I don't know how good it will be. Little crackers. Let's see what else. I did get my um, beans to make hummus but I couldn't find the uh, tahini. And I got some Brazilian cheese. It's uh, it's kind of, I guess, supposed to be similar to like a, a Parmesan or a Pecorino Romano, but it's made in Brazil. So uh, it was a little bit cheaper. Let's, uh, let's see how it tastes. And of course some Gorgonzola. Can't go wrong with a little uh, blue cheese and uh, wine. And uh, have a great evening. I hope you enjoyed my uh, tour through the Brazilian supermarket. Let me know some other videos you want to see in the comment section. See you next time. Peace.